Tisa Kumono. Let's give it up for Pastor Anthony O.S. Quarting. Praise the Lord. Can you do it better unto the Lord? I, I asked Ebeneza, uh, Pastor Japon, that uh, who is he talking about? Is it me that he says smart person? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. God richly bless you. And God bless you, life in Patqua, the evergreen life in Patqua for that ministration. Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together. Give Jesus some praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. We want to bless the name of the Lord for this opportunity. We want to thank our apostle in chair, apostle Lawrence Otunya Akundefat, and all colleague ministers here, and our dear officers who are gathered here tonight. Amen. Jesus. Can you, can you say it as if you believe that indeed Jesus is the horn of salvation out of which the oil is pouring on you tonight? Jesus! Jesus! Hallelujah! May the oil in that horn pour afresh on you tonight. May the grace in that horn pour afresh on you tonight. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. We thank God for all the earlier speakers who are spoken on the theme tonight. I speak to you on the topic, such a great salvation. Such a great salvation. Hallelujah. Such a great salvation. Jesus is the horn of salvation. And that salvation is such a great salvation. You can't afford to forfeit the salvation Jesus brings to humanity. And if you have accepted that salvation, you can't afford not to work it out with fear and trembling. Hallelujah. Such a great salvation. We will read the team text, um, the Luke chapter 1, verse 68 and 69. And then we will take some other scriptural reading. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people. Tonight, may the Lord come unto his people and redeem them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 2 to 4. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. Hallelujah. How can we ignore so great? How can we ignore such a salvation? How can we? How can anybody? How can any flesh? How can any mortal, man or woman? How can anybody ignore such a great salvation? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the salvation the Lord has brought unto us is great. Can somebody say the word great? It is great because the love that provided that salvation is great. It is such a love that has never been expressed on earth before. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish. But that fellow will have eternal life. The love that supplied the salvation was such a great love. 
And we sing the song that is so deep, you can't get under it. It's so high, you can't get over it. It's so wide, you can't get around it. That is the love of God. And it is that love that produces the salvation you and I are enjoying. And if you are watching us, you are here tonight, you have not received this salvation. It is that love that has made us who we are. And that is why we commend this love of God and this salvation to you. That you, God, will also come under the coverage of this great salvation. It is great because of the great price he paid for it. Because of the price he paid for it, it cost God his only begotten son. It cost God his one and only. Hallelujah. It is not an easy thing to lose a one and only. When you have reached the point where you have something you call your one and only, your only money, your only job, and, and, and you are about losing it, it is so painful. But that is how much the salvation, the great salvation we have received, that is how much it cost God. His one and only begotten son. Hallelujah. It is great because of the great blessings included in the salvation. And this afternoon, Apostle Wilberforce enumerated some unto us. Again, it is great because it was not bestowed upon angels. It was not upon, uh, bestowed upon some celestial creatures, but it was bestowed upon you and I, flesh and blood. And the Bible said that even the angels wanted to look into it. It amazed even angels. And I believe they were thinking about it. How is it, this thing going to be possible? And the Bible said that even the prophets who were prophesying about it, they were, they were looking forward. When is this prophecy we are giving? When is it going to be fulfilled? When is this thing we are talking about? The virgin who is going to conceive and all. When is it going to come about? The one who is going to die. And then he will not remain in the grave. On the third day he will, he will arose. When is it going to happen? They yearn to know the days and times. But God made it elude them. And the Bible said that even the angels also sought to understand it. And they did not get understanding. First Peter chapter 1. Verse 10 to 12. The Bible said that concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care. They carefully searched with the greatest care. They wanted to know. They wanted to understand. Trying to find out the time. Somebody say the time. And circumstances to which the spirit of Christ in them was pointing. So the spirit of prophecy, the spirit of Christ in them was pointing to a certain time. And a certain chronological, chronological events that will lead to all of this. And the Bible said that they intently, they carefully were observing, looking up to maybe God will give them an inkling into the time. And the issues that will unfold as far as this salvation is concerned. Trying to find out the time. And circumstances to which the spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that will follow. Verse 12 says that it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you. Hallelujah. And so all that the revelation and the prophecies they were talking about, then the Bible said God revealed to them that this matter is not about you. Die and go. Prophesy and go. Write the prophecies for a time to come and then leave the sin. It is not about you. It doesn't concern you. It is about some treasured people. It is about you and I. It is about the people who were to be born in later generations. You and I. It wasn't about them. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you. When they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. And then the apostle Paul Peter asked, even angels long to look into these things. Even angels. But they couldn't get the understanding. Tonight, I am here to declare to somebody that what angels could not understand, what the prophets could not comprehend, the Lord Jesus made you and I partakers of this great salvation. 
What angels sought to understood and they could not get to the bottom of it. It pleased the Lord that you and I will partake, that you and I will participate, that you and I will be partakers and beneficiaries of all the sufferings that the Lord Jesus suffered for mankind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so when it comes to this great salvation and the work the Lord has done concerning us, and then you want to talk about our evangelistic messages as we proclaim Jesus. We proclaim Jesus as the Savior, and then we proclaim him as the healer. And so tonight, even as we declare him as the healer, we are praying that the healing grace of God will flow in this auditorium, touching every infirmity, every infirmity, every affliction, and the Lord bringing healing to bear upon every soul that is ailing. Now we talk about Jesus, the one who baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And then we talk about Jesus, the one who is coming very soon. And his coming is closer than we ever thought. Hallelujah. He is just at the very threshold and he's going to break through unto us and redeem his own. In recent times, we have added that Jesus, the one who sanctifies those who confess faith in him. Hallelujah. This is our gospel. And this is the gospel of the great salvation. Nothing in the Christian faith can bear fruit without being rooted in the fact that Jesus came to die. And that he died for our sins. And when he died, death could not hold him captive. On the third day, he arose triumphantly. And by his resurrection... You and I have received such a great salvation. Hallelujah. You and I have received such a great salvation. And when you go through the scriptures, you realize that scripture sets forth the agenda of salvation in three folds. And this afternoon, Apostle scratch upon it. I just want us to go a bit deeper into that threefold salvation that culminates or, or come together and sum up the great salvation we have received by virtue of the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so, Scripture sets forth the great salvation in threefolds. The first one being the fact that we have been saved. And the second one, being the fact that even in this present age, the Lord is saving us. And the third one, the fact that at the end of age, our salvation will be consummated. Hallelujah. We want to pick these items one by one and look carefully into them and see how the Lord Jesus has done for us. The first one, the fact that we have been saved. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5 verse 6 to 7. Romans chapter 5, verse 6 to 7. The Bible says, you see, at just the right time, somebody say right time. When we were still powerless, when we had no strength in us, when we were still free, when we were dying in sin, when we had, we had fallen so deep into the miracle, into the pits, at just the right time. When we are still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So Christ did not wait for you to get out of that pit. Rather, he descended, he condescended into the pit, held our hands and got us out. He did not set any condition precedent and said, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. While we were yet sinners, while we were covered in sin, while we were spot, while we were decaying, while we were dying, while we were in our circles, while the burden of sin was weighing us down, the Bible said that Christ 
died for the ungodly. Hallelujah. And so as humans born in the lineage of Adam, all of us were accounted as sinners. But the Bible says that even though we were condemned, Christ justified us. Even though we were meant to die, Christ exchanged and gave us his life. And there was no condition. Praise the Lord. You see, sometimes when human beings, you are seeking help from human beings and they know they can't help you, then they set for you some high standards, some high conditions you can't meet. Someone was talking to me and then he's mentioning this uncle in the UK who wants to help him to go to the UK. And then he said, the uncle says that, um, oh dear, but more than a visa, not a plane ticket. Now we never do UK and go out there. Then I said, which one is difficult? As for Heathrow, if you land at Heathrow and you see any black person follow and say that means to be free Ghana, they will help you. But the most difficult one is getting the visa and the ticket. And I told him that, oh, if I don't you maybe not even free. When human beings doesn't want to help you, they give you conditions you cannot meet. I don't know about this or be a catcher, but say, a dark who could be free, say, my boy. The day the hen grow teeth, come for this one. And have you seen a hen growing teeth before? When human beings realize that their strength and, and their power cannot meet what you are looking for, they set conditions. And sometimes the conditions are so high and lofty, you cannot meet them. But this Jesus we are talking about in the great salvation he has brought unto humanity, there was no condition. There was no go and do this, go and do that. All that he requires of us, that whosoever, 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 man or woman, whosoever, you come from the poorest of families, whosoever, you have not been schooled, whosoever, you have not been trained, whosoever, the whosoever applies to everybody, every human being, every mortal, and as many as will come unto him, he will not throw them away. The Bible said that for those who believe in him, he has given them the rights to become sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah. While we were yet sinners. While we were yet sinners. While we're having the stains of sin all around us. He cleansed us. And today you and I are here. We are spotless. We are wrinkless. We, we don't have any blemish on us. Let me tell you. Don't, don't see yourself as a sinner. Christ has paid the price. Don't see yourself as somebody who is struggling with your sin. Christ has paid the price. He wants to have something passes through and then you seem to be going down. Just bounce back and align yourself and move. Tell somebody, bounce back and align yourself. Hallelujah. In this world, sometimes, even when you are driving on our street, if you don't take care, by impulse, some words will flow from your mouth. The way some taxi driver will crisscross and zigzag your, your, your lane. If you don't take care, by the time you realize, say, hey, no. then the Holy Spirit will knock you. Immediately he knocks you, align yourself. And then move. But we are not sinners. Because Christ paid the price. Because he paid it all. He, we owe the debt we could not pay. He paid the price that was a burden unto us. We were condemned to hell. He took our place and he died for us. We were called sinners, but he changed our name. And today we are called righteous. We are called the saints of God. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 8 to 9. The Bible said that but you are a chosen people. You are a royal priest to the holy nation. God's special possession. Tell somebody by your side you are God's special possession. God's special possession. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now, hallelujah, but now, say but now, but once you were not a people, but now you are God's chosen people, but now you are God's treasure possession, but now you are God's special people, a royal priesthood, the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. For God did not send his son into the world 
to condemn the world but to save the world through him john 3 17 and so christ did all of these things for us when we are commemorating easter easter is just a reenactment of what jesus did we are trying to remember all that he did and so as for the payment he has paid it some two thousand years and beyond ago he paid it hallelujah the payment for your well-being for your health for for eternal life for everything that concerns you in and around your life he has paid the price he has paid the price. He has paid the price. Because he was us, he has become our salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then the second one is that even presently, Jesus is still interceding and delivering us from trouble day in and day out. Every day, there is something he's doing in and around our lives. He is still saving us. After he finished the work on the cross, that is the past here on earth, Jesus went up, he ascended. He sat at the right hand of God. And the Bible says that he is making intercessions for us. How beautiful that Jesus is the one beside the throne of God and interceding for you and praying for you. And praying that you'll be taken out of trouble. You'll be taken out of calamities. You'll be taken out of sicknesses. You'll be taken out of issues. And this one is happening on a daily basis. It is not once. It is happening on a daily basis. Every day. Every day. As we move about. There are troubles and traps all around us. But Jesus ensures that you are escaping each and every one of them. And it is a daily thing. Hallelujah. Psalm 68 verse 19. The Bible said that praise be to the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. It is daily. It is every day. As you wake up, Jesus also goes to work every day. To deliver those who belong to him. Hallelujah. First, second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Paul had this to say. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril. And he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. Praise the Lord. And so every day the Lord is delivering you. The Lord is rescuing you from trouble, saving you from calamities. There are calamities all around us. And sometimes I tell people that many are the battles the Lord contends with the enemy on our behalf. We are not even aware. Many are the battles. You read Numbers chapter 23. And then in Numbers chapter 23... The Amorab king, Balak, has gone to hide this false prophet called Balaam. And the agenda was that Balaam, come and curse the Israelites for me. The Israelites were not aware. They were in a valley. They had set their camp there. And then this man said that, I have seen them. They are coming. These people, if I allow them to come, I cannot contend with them. So please come. Come and place a curse upon them for me. On the way going, the Bible said that God intercepted the prophet. Listen, every day God intercepts missiles that are shot at your camp. Every day God intercepts sicknesses that are shot at your camp. And the apostle Paul said that he will continue. He is not stopping today. He will continue. Tomorrow he will do it. Tomorrow's next he will do it. Next month he will do it. Next year he will do it. Sometimes you see the tip of it and then you think that you think that the whole world has come to an end for you. It was just a tip the Lord showed you. Many are the deliverances he has provided that you were not aware. The Israelites were not aware. This prophet began to prophesy. He opens his mouth and he said that there's no curse in Israel. How can I curse those that people have not cursed? Then Balak will say that, hey, I called you to come and curse and not to bless. If you like, come and stand here. This place is so high. You see them clearly and you can pronounce the curse. He said, let's, let's go there. He goes to stand there. He opens his mouth and he said that there is no omen. There is no divination against Israel. For the Lord, your God, is with them. 
the Lord their God. Let me pronounce to somebody who is a partaker of this great salvation that the Lord your God is with you. The Lord your God is with you. And tonight, whatever the challenges are, may he deliver you. Hallelujah. The devil and his cohorts sometimes are doing things all around us. But you see, the Lord has put a no-fly zone upon your head. Upon your head, there is a no-fly zone. Do you know that God is the first person who declared no-fly zone in the world? When you read Exodus chapter 8, when God was sending the plagues to the land of Egypt, in chapter 8, God was unleashing flies. And he said that from today, I'm going to put a distinction, verse 22, between the land of Goshen, where the Jews are, and your land. And there you will see. But on that day, I will deal differently with the land of Goshen, where my people live. No swamps of flies will be there, so that you will know that I, the Lord, I am in this land. So God is the first person who declared a no-fly zone. And he told the fly that this place, Omun Kaho. And I dream if I saw what he has said, and you may be in the way I say, I will own Kaho. If you say, Radi, do I say it in Tabai? I say, There's no fly zone upon your head. In this week, I was following the news, and then I read that in one, in one of the, of the um, forests in Ghana, you know, it's a reserve. Some people have gone in there and they have shot some buffaloes. I don't know if somebody has somebody heard that news. They have shot some buffaloes and they have arrested them. Anybody heard that news? You heard that news? Good. And they have arrested them. So as I was preparing, my, my mind took me back to that news. Why would somebody shoot a buffalo? And then they go and arrest him and they are preparing them for court. Because in that enclave called the reserve, there is a no shooting zone. You may be the, 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 a sniper, an, an American sniper. You may have the surplus AK-47. As long as the buffalo is in that reserve, you are bound from shooting. If you shoot, you'll be placed in the court. Let me tell somebody under the sound of my voice that the Lord has placed you in his reserve. In that reserve, the one who is manning the reserve is the horn of our salvation. And he has declared no fly zone. There is no shooting in that reserve. There is no shooting in that reserve. You may see the buffalo out of the reserve and shoot. You are free. But the reserve is not going to and I do it as I say, or time for be a big boy will come from Obey Yasem. Because we serve the Lord who daily bears our burdens. It is not one day, it is daily. It is daily. It is daily. I want you to have this assurance. You, you, must, you, must, you must be so confident in where the Lord has placed you. You see, in this world, Sometimes you may have malaria. It doesn't mean the Lord has released you onto the enemy. Sometimes things may come and crisscross your path. It doesn't mean the love of God has been taken away. The day the love of God is taken away, God would have broken the New Testament covenant of salvation. And God is not going to do that today. Neither would he do it tomorrow. For he is not a man that he would change his mind. Or the son of man that he will tell you this and then say that it is not like that. And so sometimes God in his own sovereignty may permit things even in the present time, the present era of salvation that he's delivering you from trouble every day. Sometimes you may go through things. But let me tell you something. Immediately God permits anything untoward, anything negative to come your way. God has something doing. And immediately that thing comes. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 is activated. Immediately that thing begins to run through in and around your life. Romans 8 28 is activated and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love so that thing is, that is coming, God is going to turn it around. And then there will be an upliftment. When men say there is a casting down, the Lord will lift you up. 
when men say that you are about to fall the lord will make your feet alike like that of the deer and places you on your heights when men says we have already catch him the bible said that by my god i will run through troops when men think that we have now blocked him we have barricaded him we have placed an impediment we have obstacled him david said by my god i will scale every wall i came to tell you tonight that by virtue of the great salvation any wall will be scaled hallelujah so have that assurance know your position in christ don't be intimidated tell somebody by your side don't be intimidated by the devil don't be intimidated. But with Christ on our side, we are in Christ's forest reserve. If you are contending with man, you can go to God and God will mediate now, what if God is the one contending with you? Who will mediate for you? And that is where God has placed you. When anybody touches you, God takes you aside and contend with that person. Hallelujah. Know your position. Don't be intimidated. He who is with you is the strong one. He is the horn of our salvation. And then at the end of age, the last aspect, and I, I rest my case. Our salvation has a future perspective. In the future, our salvation will be finalized. It shall be consummated. We will be taken into eternal glory. We shall be made into the visible and eternal likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is coming very soon. Soon and very soon. We shall see the king. Soon and very soon. We shall be crowned. Soon and very soon. We shall be raptured. Soon and very soon. We shall be with Jesus where he is. Soon and very soon. Isaiah chapter 25 verse 9. Isaiah 25 verse 9. In that day, they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We, strutted, we trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. And so there is a great joy and gladness coming in the context of our salvation. And it is very soon. Tell the person by your side, it is very soon. Don't forfeit it. It is very soon. First John chapter 3 verse 2. He said, dear friends, we are already God's children. What John is trying to say here is that the Lord has saved us, he has sanctified us, he has redeemed us. And so we have given, been given the right to become the children of God. He's saying, dear friends, we are already God's children. But he has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know. Everybody say, but we do know. Or oh, say it like you believe you will go some. But we do know that we will be like him. For we will see him as he really is. And I am expectantly looking forward to that day. That day when that horn will be sounded again like a trumpet. Pa, 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 and all those of us who are ready and are standing right and are prepared will be caught up. And we are going to meet our Savior in the atmospheres, in the air. And the Bible said that how he is, we shall be like him. This mortal body that, they, that sometimes suffers sickness and suffers all kinds of pain, it shall be transformed and we will receive a glorious new body. Hallelujah. That will be the time our salvation will be finalized. So for now, he has saved us. We are already the children of God. He is delivering us daily out of atrocities, out of troubles, out of the devil's agenda. And then in the soon coming future, Jesus will redeem us. Ask the person by your side, are you ready for that episode of our redemption, of our salvation? Are you ready? Ask the next person, are you ready for that episode? It shall be a wonderful moment. And none of us here should forfeit it. But if you are listening to us and you have not given your life to Jesus, you have not even started. You are like the buffalo that is not in the reserve and is walking anywhere. The hunter can shoot the gun anyhow. 
But tonight we commend unto you Jesus Christ. It is he who has bestowed on us such a great salvation. And when you commit your life to him, from this time forward, your life is never the same. Your life is hidden in Christ. And Christ is hidden in God. You are not easily traceable. My, 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 Jesus. For those of us who have already given our life to Jesus, there is work for us to do. The first one is that make sure do not neglect such a great salvation. You will neglect it by entertaining sin in your life. When you are entertaining sin and you are playing with sin, you are neglecting the salvation. Such a great salvation. And the Bible says that if you ignore it, how can you escape? It will not belong. Jesus will come. And so you don't have to toy with the salvation he has brought unto us. For those of us who have been saved, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Don't lose it. Work at it. Expand every deficiency in your life. And this afternoon we pray so much about things that keeps us down. That do not make us live the full life as a Christian. Don't go back to that. The Lord touched you this afternoon. The Lord took it away. You need not to go back. Work at it with fear and trembling. And then last but not the least, rely on him. He is the one who is carrying you. The storms may rage. The waves may rise. But trust him. Be confident in him. Do not lose this confidence you have in him. For with him, if you walk hand in hand with him, your journey of the Christian life will be smooth. He has given us such a great salvation. What else would he not in addition grant us, even as our supplications rise unto him? The starting point, as I said, is accepting Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. And so tonight, wherever you are watching us, if you are, you are sitting by your device online, we want to appeal to you that Jesus is still in the saving business. He did this work more than 2,000 years ago. But the potency of the blood that redeems is still working. The blood is still potent. And if you submit your life to him, from this time forward, redemption is yours. You are delivered. He will continue to deliver you. And at the end of age, at the consummation of our salvation, you shall be a partaker. May the Lord bless us.